So we started off showing you the uh, the PV panels, the solar panels outside, and of course they generate electricity from the sun and such. And uh, you're gonna you're gonna face them south. Uh, there's there's various different um, angles and such that you need to put the panels at. You need to talk with your installer about that. Uh, one thing about this particular install, and, and Frank was the first to tell me this to make mention of it because he didn't want to see a bunch of stupid comments on YouTube, but it isn't uh, necessarily the cleanest install. You'll notice uh, a lot of these wires are loose, and not loose, but uh, loose as in not in conduit or uh, PVC and such like that. Uh, Frank did most of this himself. He, he isn't overly concerned about looks. It isn't a... Uh, uh, you know, better homes and survivalist retreats, uh, you know, picture, picture perfect uh, install here. But hey, guess what? It's working for them. They've been using it for almost a decade. So if you feel the need to put a stupid nitpicking comment out there, it you, you just shows your, your immaturity. Anywho, the power comes in from the solar panels <clears throat> to two devices. Well, first off, it goes to a, a safety disconnect. It's kind of hard to see this in this, uh, in this dark room. Uh, but when it goes to these two things, these are two, they're, char they're called charge controllers. Now this is going to basically regulate the amount of power that goes in from the panels to the battery bank. And I'll zoom in here so you can see some of the features. Right now, got some excellent power in these batteries. 26.2 is the battery voltage there on the side that you can see. And the other charge controller is reading very similar. Tw yeah, also 26.2 what these and this is a 24 volt system so they're at uh, they're at I've seen these go a little higher what would you say about 27 yeah 27 28 uh, that you can get you know uh, in a max power uh, type situation and such and the other thing too is the indicator light there is blinking green when they are fully fully charged it uh, it will just just sit at a solid green and such but the power comes into them <clears throat> from the panels through that uh, photocell disconnect switch and such a safety switch and this regulates the amount of power that goes into the batteries uh, which is important if you just hook a solar panel right to a battery uh, you'll eventually destroy the battery because it's just going to keep couldn't keep uh, putting power in over and over and over okay and eventually it's going to hurt the battery from from doing so so once it's uh, once it's got in here the other thing it does as well too is this is going to uh, it's going to do two things it's also going to allow you to equalize the batteries approximately once a month and you'll see here uh, really hard to get in close on these things and, and give you the descriptions and such but uh, what it's also going to do is when you EQ the batteries uh, basically, the batteries are going to get a fair amount of sulfate on the on the plates, and what's going to happen is approximately once a month or so. And you can do this if you have a generator set. It's easiest to do it with the generator set, but it's also good from time to time to do it with your with your solar panels. And I would recommend you do that about once a month or so. Is EQ your batteries? What that's going to do is it puts in basically basically an overcharge to keep it simple and we're not going to use a bunch of technical terms here and try to impress you with jargon and such we're trying to make this really simple so folks that that don't know about uh, this sort of thing can understand so no need to uh, to slay us for the fact that we're not using the correct industry terms or we didn't read our industry magazine or silly stuff like that okay <clears throat> anywho getting back to it what it's going to do is it's going to put in a, a, a essentially an overcharge and what that's going to do is the excess power and such is going to create a condition in the batteries where it more or less self cleans the plates uh, to keep it to keep it simple it's going to be such a high amount of power in there it's going to knock some of the uh, some of the crap more or less uh, the the sulfates and such off of the battery plates so it's going to it's going to project uh, prolong the life of your batteries and such so that's something you need to do every month with your uh, with your uh, charge controllers or via your generator set. Okay, leaving, <clears throat> and this is would be more or less the the direction of flow. If you looked at, if you look at this kind of like plumbing, and if you try to envision it, if you have a hard time with electricity, and I and I did for a long time, and and this is I can wire a battery bank, wire a couple solar panels, do very basic stuff on this, but uh, I I don't claim to be a, a certified installer or any sort of thing like that. But again, to keep it very simple in the explanations and such. If you picture, the easiest way to understand this if you're having a problem with it is you picture your PV panels or your solar panels as basically your water flow. It's where it's coming from. Say that's your spring. All right, the water is flowing in from there to the charge controllers. The charge controllers are acting more or less like a valve. All right, they're regulating the flow of water into your batteries, which you can look at as more or less like a storage tank. Okay, 
So what the <clears throat> what the charge controllers are doing is they're making it to where the spring or your your water source there does not overfill your uh, your uh, capacity here to store it. Uh, what what they're using here is the Trojan L16 deep cycle batteries. These are six volt batteries, and that's more or less the common uh, common use item for uh, for small to medium sized solar systems. Uh, these have went up in price considerably the last few years with uh, with metal prices going up and such. But uh, what they're using is they're using a 24 volt system. <clears throat> okay, each one of these batteries is six volt. Okay, so they're wired in parallel to make up to 24. So you'll see six times four equals 24 volts. This is this is the voltage of the system, and then they're wired in series to uh, bump up the uh, the total amperage and such of the uh, of the uh, uh, the total power essentially of the um, of the battery bank. All right. So after it leaves, so again we're 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 starting at the solar panels. And the power comes in there, comes down through the switch, through the safety switch, goes to the charge controllers, which regulate the power, and then into the batteries. Now, all throughout this process, this is 24 volts DC direct current. Okay, the solar panels put out 12 volts DC each, and they're wired in in twos. Okay, in pairs, and so each pair essentially is putting out 24 volts. And again, we're trying to keep this very simple. You know, we're not throwing out big terms and, and such like that. We're trying to keep it on the on the real simple type thing here. Okay, so to this point, everything is 24 volts DC. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, 24 volts is used typically on what would be more or less a medium-sized system. That's what this is. It's not a super large system. It won't do everything. It's not going to run your air conditioner. Uh, you know, if you're just a, just a complete energy hog and you know leave the uh, the refrigerator door open to air condition your house with all day long and stupid things like that it's you know a system this size is not gonna not gonna uh, do well for you you need to use a modicum of care you're going to get a lot of your systems off uh, standard electricity such as you know you're gonna do away with your electric water heater you're gonna go with solar or a gas water heater uh, same with your stove you're gonna install a gas stove and get rid of your electric stove uh, you know, uh, just different things like that. You can't use a, you know, a small system or a medium-sized system to uh, to heat and cool your house. You know, different things like that. So that's step one: is you're going to try to reduce as many of the loads as you possibly can on your system. All right. If you don't want to do that, then you're going to have to go the Donald Trump approach, okay? And you're going to have to spend a hundred thousand dollars or more on a on an energy system. And, and most folks you know want a system like that but they're not going to be able to afford a system like that champagne wishes caviar dreams but beer budgets type of deal so uh, again this is this is what we're talking about right here 24 volt system the other thing is you want to keep your line runs as short as possible especially if you're using 12 volt there's a lot of line loss with 12 volt uh, again to keep with OPSEC and such like that uh, there is a little bit of a run between what you saw as the